All right, hey guys, what's going on? So today we are going to be going over the Ricci Scaler. The Ricci Scaler is super important in helping us understand later topics that are going to be touched upon, such as the Lagrangian NGR and many other very important topics. So without further ado, let's get straight into the content. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button if you like this kind of content. Now, let's get into the video. Also, make sure to go to my Patreon page if you want to support the channel. So, we're going to start off by talking uh, talking about a brief review. So we talked about the Riemann curvature tensor. All right, so the Riemann curvature tensor, again, was this object. It was this tensorial-like object that compared the result f of holding a vector and traveling along a manifold in two different directions, but arriving at the same point. Okay, this was, so we could say going in this direction, and then this direction, and we get this vector, and then say we went in this direction, and then this direction, and we got this vector. The two vectors are different. If Or if the two vectors are different, we get this vector right here, and that vector right there was the Riemann curvature tensor. It, the difference is that vector um, is encoded in the Riemann curvature tensor. Okay, now let's talk about the next thing we covered, which was the Ricci tensor. The Ricci tensor, to get from the Ricci ten to get to the Ricci tensor from the Riemann curvature tensor, we identified R I L I K, where these two guys contracted over each other, and what the end result was the Ricci tensor, so L K. And the Ricci tensor told us something about the volume and the geodesic deviation, okay? We took geodesic deviation vectors, right? But these, uh, but we were also able to geometrically understand this as volumes changing along the manifold. So you specify some direction, and you get a, and you specify some direction that you travel along the manifold. And as you travel along that manifold, the volumes change, and that volume change is encoded in the Ricci tensor, right? So. In one case, we have vector changes. So vector changes, and then contraction gave us volume changes. And further contraction, this isn't really contraction because we get from the Ricci tensor, we get from the Ricci tensor to the Ricci scalar by contracting with the metric. So L, K, R, L, Okay, and that gave us the Ricci scalar. Ricci scalar is going to tell us something about how areas, so this is going to be areas, deviate from flatness. Okay, and the picture here that I have is we have this flat disk, and this flat disk has some area, and then we have the rest of this, which is an area that deviates from that flatness. So we're standing at some point, and that point has some area associated with it, and however however that area deviates from flatness is going to be encoded in the Ricci scalar. Okay. Something important to note also is that these two guys, this is a, a one this is a one three tensor. So this is a this is a one three tensor field. One three tensor field. Right, because R I L J K exists there's a tensor that exists at every point in space and time on the manifold. Same thing here. This is a tensor field, so this is really R L K X mu. And then this guy here also R X mu. These are all fields, okay? So you identify some point in space, and then you can, t and then we can calculate uh, vector deviations, volume deviations, and area deviations, or deficits, as I, I like to call them. I talk about deficits in the differential geometry playlist. So let's actually now calculate and justify why the Ricci scalar tells us something about areas. 
So we start off with this picture, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a few things first. So we have rho given to us by this equation. If all we have to do is look at this, know some trig, and develop these equations. ds here is this this is the integration measure that we're going to integrate over in a few seconds. And then r here is this um, this uh, uh, this arc length, right? So the arc length, and this here should be theta, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and integrate. So we want to find this entire area. Okay, so to take a, a small, we're going to take a small sliver of ds, right? So ds is that small sliver we're talking about. And we're going to integrate the circumference over that um, over that area, or over that small ds, okay? So we can sort of think of this as we take ds, this, I'll keep that as a theta, but we're taking ds and we're integrating circumferences, okay? So we're going to be integrating circumferences over ds. So we can substitute some stuff in here. So rho, again, is r sine theta. ds is r delta theta, or d theta. Then we get uh, this right here, okay? We just take the constants out. We're going to integrate sine. And really, this is just going for where we really just want to f f uh, know the angle here. So we're going from angle to zero to angle equals theta. So this should be theta as well. Okay. And then we have, uh, we end up with this equation right here. So the area is given to us by this right here. So the, again, this is the area of this guy right here, okay? And so what we can do is we can compare that area to a flat, a flat circle, right? The flat circle again is this right in here. So the area of that flat circle is going to be, well, R, my apologies there. So this is, this is that R, okay? And we are comparing now the area of the sphere with the area uh, of the flat. Um, and what we're going to do now is we're going to, we can cancel out pi's, we can uh, take a lot of constants out in front here. And what that's going to do it's going, to, it's, it's going to take all these constants out front, and then we can expand this. When we expand this, we get all this. The ones will cancel, right? So the ones are going to cancel. And we end up with this equation right here. And this equation right here, when we, apl when we apply this first, we're going to get 1. And then the rest, you can sort of pause the video if you want, but we're going to get all this. And what ends up happening, what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, we're going to ignore this guy, this factor here, because this is, this is really small, right? And this, when things are really small and we exponentiate them, then they just get smaller, right? So these are fourth order terms in R, or little r. And so what that means is we're just going to keep this guy, okay? So we're going to approximate the area of the sphere with the uh, flat area as being this equation. So we want to keep this in mind because, because this guy right here is what we want to focus on now. So we're going to keep this in mind. And now let's take a look at what happens when we contract, when we actually do the contraction now. All right, so we do the contraction. This is what all that is, right, that we're summing over. That's what the contraction does. 
And when we sum over all of that, we're going to get these because these two guys are going to cancel. Because those two offset values are zero for each and every one of these. So we're really only concerned with these elements right here. Okay, this is the metric uh, and the Ricci tensor for spherical. Um, uh, this is sort of redundant for a sphere. I'll just say for for a sphere. All right. This is these are things we're going to go over later when we start talking about short shield metrics and actually getting into specific types of metrics. But that's sort of there for right now. And when we do that, we get this equation. And I keep on using the pen, I should use my pointer. So we get this equation and then uh, we get this. Reducing all this, right, because this is just one over r squared. These guys are gonna cancel, it's gonna be one over r squared. So one over r squared plus one over r squared is two over r squared. And this is why I said, well, here's two over r squared. So this means that the Ricci scalar therefore tells us, tells us, <laughs> I need to go back into my notes and fix some of the, fix some of the typos. Tells us how the surface area, how surface areas deviate from flatness. All right, so here's that, here's that Ricci scalar. This is the Ricci scalar and this Ricci scalar it tells us again this is we have these fourth order terms in R but the Ricci scalar again tells us how areas deviate from flatness so we can come back up to this picture really quick and sort of summarize so this picture I think is really good at summarizing I will erase a lot. I'm going to erase some of this. We're just going to cover this one more time. Riemann curvature tensor. To get from that, we we look at a subset of them. Uh, this would be L, right? L, J, K, and then to get from the Ricci tensor to the Ricci scalar, we contract with G, L, K. Okay. And that's how we get the Ricci scalar. The Ricci scalar told us something about areas. The Ricci tensor told us something about volumes. And the Ricci curvature tensor told us something about vectors. These are the this is the geometric understanding of the Ricci scalar. Okay, in the next few videos on this GR playlist, this is where things are going to get a little bit more advanced and more unique to this channel because what we want to do now is we want to take a look at some more interesting tensors, right? So we're gonna cover the idea of the Vial tensor. We're going to cover the idea of the Einstein tensor, the Einstein tensor, and we're going to cover the idea of many other different types of tensors. This, the, the, the idea of this playlist is to go more advanced than what other playlists have done on YouTube. So the Vial tensor, we're going to be able to look at, the uh, say, the Lan Lanskos tensor. Uh, the Plebonsky tensor, and a lot more, right? And then there's all these different types of scalars also, right? Because the idea here is that the Ricci scalar, well, that's a scalar that was we were able to contract with the Ricci tensor. But the, the next question that we can ask is, well... So we have the Riemann curvature tensor, right? Riemann curvature tensor is something like this. 
And what the what we did to get to the Ricci the Ricci tensor was we we identified alpha with mu. However, we could say do something like this R alpha beta mu nu. We can lower an index with the matrix with the metric. And then we could say contract this with alpha, beta, mu, nu. And so alpha, beta, mu, nu. Well, this, this is a full contraction. We have all four upper indices and lower indices. Well, this is going to equal something quite interesting. We're going to call this scalar k. And this is going to be the Kretschmann scalar. This is going to be a very interesting scalar that tells us something about uh, the geometry of space-time as well, and it's going to be very heavily used in understanding black holes. But again, the idea here is to get to the Riemann, or to get to the Ricci scalar, the Ricci scalar R, we uh, we contracted, and then here I'll do it like this. Oops. We contracted the indices and then we used the metric. Here we used, the, in this case, we used the metric, right? And then we used two copies of the Riemann tensor to create a, another scalar. These two scalars are not the same thing, okay? And there's many other different types of scalars out there. For example, one good example, another good example is well, we can calculate the dual of the, we can calculate the dual of the Riemann tensor, and that's going to give us, say, alpha, beta, uh, mu, nu, and then we can contract, this is a tensor, and we can contract this with other things also, so we'll get things like the, the Euler scalar and a lot of different types of interesting scalars. And this is going to, that's sort of going to get us into the field of, okay, scalars are invariant. We're being able to build all these scalars, okay? If they're invariant, then they should be able to be, get placed into an action. And so if we put these scalars in an action, can we get the uh, Einstein field equations from that? And this is really where the advanced areas in G are start coming into play, okay? So this is the, we're gonna be doing a lot of this stuff and videos to come. So if you like this kind of video, if you like this kind of content, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button and go into my Patreon page if you wanna support the channel. I'll see you guys in the next video, bye.